Logan Stan Colvin, little chip behind the net. I think the biggest thing, too, about watching things in person, you don't get in video. You see things behind the play, mm -hmm. and you see their demeanor on the bench, you see how they interact with teammates, those types of things where... The camera pans. Yeah, like, right like you now. can't even see Canada's bench right now. Yeah, we can't see. Or anything behind the play. Right. My first meeting, I walk into the coach's locker room, and you're kind of like looking around the room, and you, you're, I'm the only girl standing there. So for me, that was kind of like, you know, I was intimidated at first, but you sit down and you're just talking hockey. You, you know, I know the game, I know the sport, so you're, it just turns into a comfortable situation. And from there, I've always been given a voice. I think it's the old saying, if you can see it, you can be it. Growing up, I had no idea, like, even at these positions existed, let alone just for for women. And even through my career, I was a little bit lost at times because I wanted to stay in hockey. I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do. There were no females in scouting or hockey operations that I knew about. So being a visible female in the NHL or in hockey operations, I take a lot of pride in that. Hopefully it'll give more girls opportunities to work in this profession. One of the most exciting parts of this season was to see both Megan and Mary uh, take a step forward. Kendall Coyne even helped out a little bit with some scouting. She certainly helped us on the ice in player development, but in, in scouting it was Megan Hunter and Mary DiBartolo who really took on some new roles this year. I've been here five years now. Uh, it's just kind of crazy to think about. I played uh, four years at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. After school I took a position with Niagara University as an assistant coach in D1 women's hockey. The following year I moved to the University of Maine. I decided to move back closer to home and take a position with the London Knights of the OHL where I was kind of involved in everything from group sales, marketing, game operations, uh, you name it, small organization. We were kind of had our hands in it. After the London Knights I moved on to Hockey Canada for six years. Following Hockey Canada, I landed a position with the Chicago Blackhawks. I played for the Chicago Mission for my whole high school career, basically. And then from there, I went to St. Mary's in Minnesota. Right after I graduated, I thought I kind of wanted a break from the sport. I thought, no, nah, I'll just kind of hang out my skates and you know, kind of see where life takes me. And then I got a call from my old coach from the Mission, Tony Catchy, and he was like, hey, you want to push some pucks around, you know, for some 14 year olds and just, you know, keep your skates on. And I was kind of like, ah, not really sure I'm, you know, want to do that. But eventually I did and have been doing that ever since. So I've been doing that for seven years now with the Chicago Mission. You know, I never played in the Olympics or played any division one. And so if somebody brings in a girl, you're looking right at their hockey resume. Like where'd she play? Like what were her numbers? Things like that. I mean, that's like all the talk in all of our amateur meetings. So like that was kind of scary to me at first. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe they like, they won't trust me, but maybe they don't think I'm like good enough in that sense, but like that wasn't the case at all. With the 172nd pick, the Chicago Blackhawks are proud to choose Chad Yetman. I was impressed right away with her ability to jump right in with meetings with Jeremy and the coaches and showing no intimidation or fear. I think there aren't a lot of women in hockey ops, and I think you know that's something that we want to change because we want to try to inspire more people to take that step and to step forward and show that what you see is valuable. I feel like it's better than that thing. Are you just doing one-timers? This year we saw the value on the amateur side, so she was able to do scouting in person. She went to some steel games as well as the U18s. Megan was down there as well. So when we get to our meetings and we're talking about players, They've got a lot of really good insight. He's always kind of part of the play, drives the play, but it's because he's taking out bodies. Like he's kind of throwing a check, which loosens the puck, mm -hmm. which then creates that opportunity. That he doesn't get an assist. Right. And you don't realize it until you're watching the video and you can go back and see that. Like he kind of started that whole play. The whole 30 second possession yeah. in the ozone was because he. Four checked, yeah, forced the puck over. It's been nice to try to get some live views after we've had all this video all year long that we finally, things are starting to open up slightly. 
There's so many things that you miss that are off camera, if it's the character of the players or how they're reacting on the bench, how they are reacting towards other teammates or to the coach. They don't think Scott was a fight back? Well, I think their toughest element is their power play, right? So yeah. they got so many skill guys. I'm stating my opinions and I feel valued when I'm saying them. I think that's really key is that they've made me feel valued heading into the amateur scouting and that my opinion is being heard. I was a little surprised. I thought Chicago would like take it to him, but it was kind of like Mark said, it's like a statement game, I guess, for uh, Fargo. But the next game, uh, it was only one goal. The Chicago won by, right? I kind of always, not really doubted myself, but I always questioned myself, like, do I deserve to be here? Is there somebody better or am I doing it the right way? And then as you start to create these relationships and you start to tackle more projects and all these different things, I kind of reflect, like, I, I deserve to be here and I hope that any other girl or female that wants to be in my position also gets that opportunity because they deserve it too. I have a daughter who loves to play hockey too and, you know, for me it would be pretty neat when 10, 20 years from now, when she's got all the opportunities that my boys have. And I think when you start seeing Kendall or Mary or Megan in big roles, they could say, that could be me one day. And I think that's something that is pretty exciting from where I sit, and hopefully we can get ourselves to that point. So on Friday, we're we're doing something a little bit different this year for the first pick as well as all the picks. We're gonna um, do something unique and we're gonna have this dedicated to the females in, in hockey ops making our picks this year. Part of the discussion that we had was who's gonna make our first pick and proud to announce that you're gonna be the one doing that for us. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm very serious. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a little nervous now, I think, mean, too, but I mean, I can't, I mean, thank you so much. Sure. For, for acknowledging my hard work and, and giving me the opportunities. We just got to figure out who we're picking, and then, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> so we don't quite know that yet. The Chicago Blackhawks are proud to select 